Welcome everyone to today's Collaborative Mentoring Webinar Series call, National Mentoring Month, Mentoring in Real Life. We are thrilled to have so many of you joining us today. Um, I know some of you are still logging in, so we'll run through this. And um, we're really excited about representing uh, the campaign this year and really learning about different ways to engage throughout the month of January. We're very excited to tell you more as well about our new campaign creative and messaging we've developed for this year, and I'm sure many of you have seen uh, what's available on www.nationalmentoringmonth.org. I um, want to just quickly give a big shout out to Midlands Mentoring Partnership in Nebraska, who provided us with the great imagery of matches you'll see on this uh, home slide here and throughout today's webinar. And before we dive into all of that, I just want to give you all a quick introduction and run through some webinar housekeeping details. Um, and I'll start with an introduction of myself. I'm Jennifer Merrill, Marketing and Communications Manager here at Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership, and I will be your moderator for today's discussion. Uh, I have Jennifer, Jennifer Burgoyne in the room with me as well, our Program Manager, who will be running our slide deck, so thank you so much, Jennifer, for your work there. This webinar is a part of the Collaborative Mentoring Webinar Series, which is funded by the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention through the National Mentoring Resource Center and facilitated in partnership with Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership. These webinars would not be possible without the planning team, which includes the mentoring partnership shown on this slide. Uh, as a reminder, one week after today's webinar, you will receive an email with information about how to download a copy of these slides and view the webinar recording by going directly to Mentor's website. And we are really looking for your feedback, so after today's presentation, please answer a short survey that will pop up as you exit the webinar. Your comments will ensure we continually improve this series, so please take the time to do that if you can. And we really want this webinar today to be a particip participatory experience, so please use the question box to ask questions throughout the webinar. Audrey Sig Siegfried, our uh, nonprofit consultant and TA provider, will be queuing up questions to share with panelists during the Q&A portion of the webinar. Uh, we likely can't get to all questions because there are several hundred of you ex expected today, but we will certainly try our best. Um, a quick note that the questions we share are generally ones that broaden and deepen the conversation we'll have today. So we'll certainly try to get as, as many as we can. Um, so unfortunately, we won't get to all, but thank you for understanding. So let's start off by seeing who's on the call today with a couple of polls. Jennifer Burgoyne, would you launch the first poll? Our first poll uh, is here before you. First, we're going to ask what your level of experience is in the mentoring field. You can use the poll slide to enter your response. So we have, we have beginner, experienced, and expert as your options. See the percentages coming through now. All right, so it looks like we have 35% beginner, 59% experienced, and 6% expert. Um, we have one other poll for you right now. Um, our, our next poll provides a better understanding of your roles in the mentoring field. So Jennifer Burgoyne, um, you can go ahead and launch the second poll. And so what is your role in the mentoring field? We have practitioner, researcher, technical assistance provider, funder, and other. Wow, so it looks like we have 64% practitioner, 1% researcher, 8% technical assistance provider, 4% funder, and 23% other. So um, that's amazing, and we really hope that today's webinar includes information or, or moments of inspiration for each of you regardless of your role in our work. So at this time, uh, I would like to introduce our four core panelists. We are very fortunate to, or I'm so sorry, three <laughs> core panelists. Um, we are fortunate to be joined by a very experienced group, um, insightful leaders in the world of youth mentoring. Um, we have Matt Meyerson on our own team, our Senior Director of External Affairs. We have Sarah Boyson, Digital Strategy Manager for America's Promise Alliance, and Amanda Granger, Project Manager, American Graduate Day. 
I'm very happy to share that Mentor, America's Promise Alliance, and American Graduate continue to work together to ensure youth have bright futures, and we are so honored and grateful um, that our partners have joined us on this call to share their expertise. So at this point, we really want to uh, share a little bit more about each of our panelists. To start, Matt Meyerson joined the Mentor team in July and serves as our Senior Director of External Affairs. He is responsible for managing external partnerships as well as leading the marketing and communications team. Previously, Matt was the Managing Director of Sports and Kid Power Partnerships for the U.S. Fund for UNICEF. He was responsible for UNICEF's relationships with American sports leagues, teams, and athletes, and dedicated himself to increasing the role American sports play in international relief work. Prior to that, Matt spent eight years with the Boston Celtics and was responsible for community relations and player development. He spearheaded the team's charitable programming and off-court development of each player. Under Matt's leadership, Celtics players consistently ranked at the top of the league for philanthropic appearances. Prior to working at the Celtics, Matt worked for the NBA and with the New England Patriots. Matt graduated from Wesleyan and received his MBA from Boston College. He is currently a regional board member for the U.S. Fund for UNICEF and is on the board of Crossover Basketball, a sport for development program in India. He also serves on the board and executes technology lab renovations for Ray Allen's Ray of Hope Foundation. Matt was raised in Cambridge, where he currently lives with his wife and volunteers as a high school basketball assistant coach. He is a mentor to Alex, first paired when Alex was in high school and recently got to celebrate Alex's college graduation. Next, we have Sarah Boyson, Digital Strategy Man Manager on the communications team at America's Promise Alliance. As an interactive online communicator, community manager, content curator, and digital strategist, Sarah has an eye for enhancing the user experience on website and social media platforms while increasing engagement and creating, community, creating communities online. Sarah most recently worked as the marketing manager for the Points of Light Corporate Institute, the go-to resource for companies looking to build and expand effective employee volunteer programs. She also served as a web publications and social media specialist at Independent Sector, the, le the leadership network for nonprofits, foundations, and corporations committed to advancing the common good. Sarah earned her Master's of Public Service and Public Relations and Corporate Communications with a spe specialization in digital strategy from Georgetown University, and her Bachelor of Arts in Public Communication at American University. And Amanda Granger is the project manager for American Graduate Day, a live television event produced by WNET that celebrates individuals and organizations keeping students on the path to graduation. Previously, she managed content marketing at StoryCorps, America's oral history project. Prior to StoryCorps, she was an education producer at WNET, working closely with PBS series such as American Masters and Shakespeare Uncovered to expand their impact in communities across the country. She has been an actress at the Tony Award-winning Children's Theater Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and an English and Social Studies teacher in Houston, Texas. She is also an experienced instructional coach and has worked with organizations like Teach for America, Match Education, and the New Teacher Project to help improve teacher practice and student achievement. Amanda graduated from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities with a Bachelor of Arts in Global Studies and has a Master's in Education from the Harvard School of Education in Technology, Innovation, and Education. So a big thank you to all of our panelists for joining us today. We're really looking forward to hearing from you. At this point, we're going to do one more quick poll, and then I'll turn it over to Matt to kick things off. Um, his focus will be on creative materials and activation for National Mentoring Month. So our next poll, we'd love to know what activities did you engage in in past National Mentoring Month campaigns to promote volunteer recruitment? So your options are social media, community events, media or corporate partnerships, other, or I've never participated in National Mentoring Month. So it looks like we have 48% social media, 43% community events, 17% media corporate partnerships, 
10% other, and 41% um, I've never participated in National Mentoring Month. So for that 41% and for all of you, we really are so excited to share what's possible um, and look forward to you engaging with us uh, leading up to January and all month long. So with that, uh, Matt, go ahead and take it away. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Uh, really excited to be able to talk with you all today about National Mentoring Month and sharing ways that you can take action to support the movement. Um, the theme of this year is the 15th year, uh, 15 years of National Mentoring Month, and you will see on the campaign materials that the 15 years uh, of National Mentoring Month is a seal that is promoted throughout all of our materials, and it's something we are very excited to share. Um, for many folks around the country, mentoring is something they haven't thought about for long or maybe just started to think about with the most recent administration in regards to My Brother's Keeper, especially with everything going on in our country, we know it's really important to show that this has been a bipartisan effort over multiple years. And um, you'll hear more about that as, as we move on. But that's something that is, it has a major role as to why we are focusing so much on the 15-year anniversary. Um, the National Mentoring Month is really an opportunity for us to provide mentors to the 9 million American youth who are still in need of a mentor. And those are kids coming from underserved backgrounds, and there's been a demonstrated need um, for them to, to receive the support from a caring adult. I want to first talk about the Mentoring Connector. For any of you who are, are connected to programs that aren't yet in the Mentoring Connector, um, this is a really a call to action for you to, to make sure that you register to become uh, a program that's listed in the Mentoring Connector. It is the only national database of mentoring programs so that anywhere someone is around the country, they can just enter in their zip code and search for all of the local mentoring programs and then di connect directly to programs directly through the Mentoring Connector. So there are about 1,600 programs around the country that are listed. There are many other programs that we know exist that aren't yet registered, and that's something that is a real opportunity. And we want to make sure that every program benefits from the mentor recruitment power of the Connector. Um, it is a way for our national partners to send a lot of interest to the Connector. And if your program is not included in there, you're really missing out. And we've done a lot of research with mentoring programs, and know that mentor recruitment is one of the key challenges to a program. So please do take advantage of this. It's something that we are putting a really increased emphasis on uh, as we move forward into 2017 and beyond. And we also are working with more and more partners, uh, some of whom you'll hear from today after I'm done, who are incorporating the Mentoring Connector uh, into their work, uh, both from a social media standpoint as well as on their website and through other means. Wanted to share some of the results from last year uh, and this year in regards to the Mentoring Connector. The orange line that you see is the previous year. Um, and still that generated about 50,000 new searches of potential mentors in the previous year. And the blue line is this most recent year. And you will really see the two huge spikes that we enjoyed. One from last year's National Mentoring Month. And it was a 100% increase over the prior year. So the team, this is before I was involved, so I really can brag about them without, without talking about myself. But it was, it's really amazing to see the work that was done last year by the entire mentoring community in regards to bringing this, men, this many new adults into the mentoring fold and to search for new opportunities. And then we had another opportunity in April, uh, thanks to the White House, thanks to President Obama, the NBA family, and the Golden State Warriors. Well, we recorded a video with President Obama and Steph Curry uh, where President Obama was mentoring Steph Curry. Uh, if you haven't yet seen that video, just go to, go to YouTube and, uh, and check it out. But with the NBA support of, of sharing it during their national broadcasts, as well as the White House and others sharing it on social media, we had the most successful month we've ever had in regards to mentor recruitment. And it was just an opportunity for us that was, was absolutely huge. And uh, our goal for 2017 is to create multiple spikes throughout the year, but really starting with January. And, and that is a, a prime opportunity for us to bring more attention to each of your programs and to get more adults engaged in becoming mentors. 
Another really great resource, in addition to the, the Mentoring Connector um, that Mentor works really hard to provide, is a toolkit that we, we provide toolkits throughout the year, but the most important and biggest of our toolkits is around National Mentoring Month. It is a completely free download for anybody who's interested in supporting the mentoring movement. So that includes, it includes everything from social media graphics to sample posts on all different social platforms to sample letters in terms of advocacy to government relations staff to corporate entities that uh, you want to reach out to to have them support your work in, in a very detailed way. Um, please do give us feedback uh, on the toolkit. We, we only create it to be useful to all of you. So if there's anything you think should be there that isn't, please let us know. And um, we, we're very excited about the toolkit format this year. You will see that you'll be able to download a lot of different images that include the National Mentoring Month seal as well as social media guides and everything else that I've mentioned. But it, it's really something that we are very, very excited to, to have out there. Uh, for any of you who have Instagram accounts, we have photos that are specifically designed and formatted for Instagram. The same for Facebook and Twitter and, and then LinkedIn posts as well. So it's something that uh, we really encourage everybody to use. And this is one of our examples where if all of us are kind of whispering in our own rooms, it's very difficult to move a movement forward. But if all of us choose the same language and scream from the rooftops together, we really can make a difference and move the needle in regards to how many of our children have the mentor that they need. We have another brand new part of the In Real Life campaign that we wanted to talk about um, at this point. So the President Obama Steph Curry video, the moment in that video that gets the biggest laugh is when President Obama is teaching Steph Curry how to shoot a basketball. There's a picture of it here. Uh, here's the greatest shooter in the world. For those of you who are not basketball fans, he has uh, broken his own NBA record for most three-pointers made in the season, uh, both of the last two years. And here he is being taught how to do what he's best at in the world by someone who is not as good uh, at that skill. And the one thing missing in this video, uh, despite its huge success, is that there's no youth voice. We're all about youth mentoring, yet there's no child in this video. And that's what we wanted to change for this year. And the new Mentoring Flip video series that is going to launch in January for National Mentoring Month is the idea that celebrities and other really uh, well-known people are going to be mentored by a kid at the thing they know best in the world. And so imagine in President Obama's place there is a child teaching Steph Curry how to shoot a basketball. Or imagine, and we would need your help because we don't currently have a connection to him, but imagine we could get to Mark Zuckerberg, who's the founder of Facebook. And he's sitting there uh, and a child is sitting in his desk and Mark's saying, I just got the best news. I wish there was a way I could share with all of my friends at once. And the idea of an eight-year-old then going and teaching Mark Zuckerberg how to use Facebook. Or if we were to work with uh, other NBA players about the skill that they're most known for. Uh, and any of a number of athletes, celebrities, um, and influencers, really anyone with a large social media following would be a wonderful fit. So please do follow up with me separately uh, from this webinar if you have contacts to anybody in the kind of public limelight who might be willing to record one of these videos for us. It's going to be a really fun series. Our goal is that these videos will be funny enough on their own that they will go viral. That even people who don't yet know that they care about mentoring are going to forward these videos around just to be able to talk about the celebrity that they look up to or that they enjoy following or they enjoy laughing at. It doesn't even matter to us whether it's, it's done in, in jest or in fun, but the call to action in each of these videos is going to be, you don't need to be an NBA all-star to be somebody's hero. You don't need to be the founder of Facebook to be somebody's hero. Along those lines, we have many of these videos that we're hoping to produce, um, and we're, we're hoping to launch the first few uh, for National Mentoring Month. So keep your eye out, and if you have any connections to folks that you think might be willing to do these for us that could really move the needle in terms of a large social following, please do uh, let us know. I wanted to talk quickly through key campaign dates, and normally I would hate to read a slide aloud, um, but I wanted to go through this uh, in detail. As in addition to the entire month being important, there are five key dates, and this is where I want to emphasize the idea of shouting together from the rooftops. So January 7th, there will be a National Mentoring Month Twitter chat. If that's a Twitter chat attended by just 
some people, it's nowhere near as good as if it's attended by more people. And of course, that's very self self evident. But at the same time, the more that we can do to spread the word, the more successful this Twitter chat will be, and then the more successful mentor recruitment will be around the country. So please do both share from your accounts as organizations, but please also consider sending out an email to all staff and have each person within your staff and your friends and your family all posting about this as well. The, the more people that are sharing, the bigger the network effect. So from there, we're going to January 12th. That is I Am A Mentor Day, and that is an opportunity to really encourage people to become mentors. A main barrier for many people is that it feels too scary and they don't know if they can rise to the challenge. And if they get to hear from people in their life who are already mentors, it is the most successful recruitment tactic in terms of encouraging somebody else to become a mentor. So this day is really important for anyone who is a mentor to be able to talk about it and share it and encourage their friends and, and their family to do the same. Moving there to January 16th, that's Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service, and it is a day to share in the inspirational words of Martin Luther King and also elevate the spirit of mentoring through volunteerism. Of course, our slant will be encouraging people to become mentors and to use the, this day to inspire people to embody the, the ideals of Martin Luther King, uh, especially as he talked about service to others being the greatest that one can, one can give to one another. So the very next day is International Mentoring Day, and that's January 17th. And this is a real social media call to action and a day that, that's very important for us as we look to grow mentoring, not just in the United States, but around the world. Um, and the final day, this is something that is the most inclusive of any day, is that every person has an individual or individuals in their life who has helped make them who they are. And the idea on this day is that we all get together and we use the hashtag thank your mentor and have an opportunity to actually thank the person or the people who have made a huge impact in our lives. And we want this to be a hashtag that is trending around the country on this day. And the idea that hundreds of thousands of people are going to be thanking their mentor for helping them to have the success that they've had in life. So uh, my final slide, I want to talk about there are ways to, to really be engaged all month long in National Mentoring Month. And um, these can happen at any point at your convenience within the month. One is holding a special recruitment event in, the, in your local community and inviting partners to attend. There are a lot of different examples. It can be as simple as just having some mentors and some mentees at the front of a room talking about their experience and relationship. It can be getting high profile people to be there. It can be inviting all of the local program, mentoring programs in your area to have tabling and just invite people and see if you can get a restaurant to donate food or alcohol or anything else and just invite adults to participate and go around and see what's, what's going on in, in regards to all of the different opportunities to get engaged. Uh, engaging with potential volunteers and community partners on social media. Uh, if there are folks who are mentoring, send a post at them thanking them for their work and thanking them for being a, a life-saving change agent for a young person. And that inherently will encourage others to get involved. The idea of creating original content is something that's really powerful. Uh, and that can be asking for mentors and mentees to submit photos of things they do together. It doesn't have to be this perfect conversation about life-changing goals. It can be going out to ice cream or going to do any of a number of things together. And young people really talk about that. It's just about having someone there for me. So that's another, another key piece. Um, please also write about the need for mentoring and publish to your blog at promoting versus via local media channels. During National Mentoring Month, it is the most likely month that local media will talk about mentoring, that they will share mentoring stories. But all of us need to use every one of our connections to get people to tell that story. It's not going to happen on its own without us pushing and trying to make that happen. So if you know somebody who's doing an internship with a local TV station, you go to them and see what's needed. What meeting can we take? Those kinds of things. Uh, Amanda's going to get to talk a lot more about uh, an example of, of that type of partnership. But our goal really here is to, to really spread the word across all of these different ideas and through all of the, the resources provided to you in the toolkit. 
uh, please do take a few minutes to check out the, the National Mentor Month Toolkit. We've done everything that we have been able to think of to make this super easy for you to be engaged. Uh, so just thank you for all that you're doing and really excited to get to work with, with all of you on these things. Um, I want to, as we're passing, as I'm, pa as I'm finishing up, want to really also thank Sarah and Amanda for their participation, not just today, but they are representing organizations that are huge champions of the mentoring movement, not just a mentor as an organization, but of the entire movement. And it's these type of partnerships that really move mentoring forward. So um, that, that's it for me. I'm around for questions at the, at the end, but I um, just really want to want to say thank you to all of you who are, are living the work on a day-to-day -day basis. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Matt. Um, really great information for all of our attendees and really agree with you that the more we can engage in these specific calls to action and engagement opportunities, um, the more success we'll have not only in the month of January and tied to the campaign, but um, in support of the mentoring movement. So thank you for that. Um, before we jump to our next presenter, we have one more poll for you all, and then we will open up for some quick Q&A. Um, so thank you, Jen, for doing poll number three. Um, which campaign materials do you anticipate mo using most often during National Mentoring Month? So Matt outlined some of these in his presentation, but we have options for digital graphics, messaging toolkit, videos, other. Great. So it looks like the clear favorite here is 81% social media messaging, um, then 46% digital graphics, and 37% videos, 12% other. Um, that's great. So at this point, uh, we wanted to give a chance for attendees to ask any burning questions, uh, chat them into the chat box, and we'll have some time set aside for this. Thanks, Jen. I'll, go, um, no, I'll pass to you, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to remind all of our participants, we've got a couple questions that have come in, but we really just want to remind you that this is for you, so please make sure to ask your questions throughout, and we'll have another Q&A um, opportunity at the end of this. Um, so my first question is, what went into developing your Mentoring Month campaign toolkit? Sure. Um, one of the big pieces of, uh, that went into it is receiving feedback from our prior toolkits and um, from programs in terms of what has been most useful. Um, the 81% of you that talked about the social media assets being the way that you're most likely to activate, because of that we spent a, a large portion of our time on social media um, related messaging, um, both from the digital graphics, even the videos we'll, we will make sure are really shareable on social media. We know that is a key way that Millennials especially, but all parts of society really relate to one another. Um, so that was a, a key component. And then wanting to make sure that we provided all of the different resources for, for ways to be involved. Everything from the calendar to all of the government relations piece and advocacy to make that easy, because that's something that's not as comfortable for a lot of organizations. And also the corporate piece, to get more local corporations engaged in your work. So all of those pieces went into how we design the toolkit, but if any part of that question is thinking that there's something missing, please do let us know. We are only as good as the feedback we receive. Thank you. Um, I've got another question. Uh, do you have any suggestions for mentoring programs in the same community to collaborate during this month? Um, we all know that competition for recruitment of mentors and mentees can be a problem, so, so how can we make this uh, more productive by working together? Yeah, one major suggestion is the idea of a mentoring fair. Um, while I know that mentor recruitment is a main priority for many organizations, I also know that budgets are very tight. So the idea of providing food and a venue for a bunch of people and also getting enough people to attend is a real challenge. But if it's a bunch of different mentoring programs coming together and an invitation, my suggestion would be to all of the local programs. And if you're not sure all of the programs, you can actually use the Mentoring Connector, put in your zip code and get a list of all of them within however many miles you want to look into. But then to invite everyone from that list to participate, 
find a venue, share costs, and have all programs get an opportunity to share their materials and inspire new adults to get engaged. Uh, it also really helps in terms of an invite list when programs work together to bring new people into the fold. Uh, one of the things that is amazing is the diversity of programs, from programs working with youth who have been incarcerated to programs working specifically in regards to STEM or any of a number of things. There, there are people that each program knows that isn't a perfect fit for their program, but would be a perfect fit for another program. So the idea of collaboration through events and, and these kind of mentoring fairs is really huge. The other thing is retweet and repost each other's social media messages. That is something that too often we, we live in this siloed environment that doesn't do anything to, to rise all boats, where if each program committed to reposting something that every other local program posts during the course of a month, that means there's going to be that many more posts going out. And that idea of collaboration and knowing that all of us are in this really for an altruistic reason of getting more kids the mentor they need, I think is really crucial. Excellent. Thank you. Jen, do we have time for one more question? Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Um, so you had mentioned uh, kind of that it's important to have a shared language. Could you talk just a little bit more about why it's important to have a shared language and message and, and why we should be utilizing the, this toolkit? Sure. I don't want to go too far into kind of marketing research and those kind of things, but in general it takes people six times hearing a message before they are likely to take action. Um, and with that in mind, if they're only hearing it from just us, they're not going to hear it enough to be willing to take action. The idea that we are going to reinforce the same messaging, it is why even when it's a million plus dollars in advertisement during the Super Bowl that an organization or that a corporation is going to do multiple ads during the same game. If it was enough to hear it once and then take action, we wouldn't need to do that. But that would pretty much have destroyed the entire advertising industry. Um, so with that in mind, it, it's really important that all of us are, are sharing the same messaging, that people are going to hear an ad on, on TV or the radio that gets through donated media, and then they're going to see it on Facebook, and then they're going to show up and someone had a great billboard that they got donated that will feel like, wow, this is fate. I just heard about it on the radio this morning, and now there's a billboard that I'm staring at on my commute. It, I really must be that I should become a mentor. Those kind of subconscious moments for people are, are really what is going to drive our success. Or if it doesn't happen, will leave us in our current state where there are way too many kids who, don't ha who do not have the mentor that they need. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Matt and Audrey, and thank you all for your questions. Um, as Audrey mentioned, feel free to chat in others, and we'll have another portion at the end of the webinar to review some of those. Um, so now we're going to hear from Sarah Boyson on best practices for social media engagement during National Mentoring Month based on success America's Promise Alliance has seen in past years and in their planning for this year. So go ahead, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, hey everyone, this is Sarah. I'm really excited to speak with you all about how you can use social media and your digital properties to help drive engagement uh, for National Mentoring Month. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about America's Promise though, just in case um, some of you have never heard of us before. Uh, so essentially, America's Promise is the nation's largest network dedicated to improving the lives of children and youth. We bring together more than 400 national organizations and thousands of community leaders to focus the nation's attention on young people's lives and voices. We also lead bold campaigns to expand opportunity, conduct groundbreaking research through our Center for Promise. Uh, basically, a lot of it is on what young people need to thrive. Uh, and we also accelerate the adoption of strategies that help young people to succeed. Um, so then I want to talk a little bit about uh, our five promises. So uh, I've highlighted here, uh, so our five promises are, you know, the, the five promises that we believe that all young people need access to in order to thrive uh, are caring adults, safe places, a healthy start, effective education, and opportunities to serve. Uh, and you'll see on the slide here I've highlighted our first promise, which is caring adults. 
Uh, this is a, a promise that's really important to us, especially as we're talking about National Mentoring Month. Uh, and your work and, and mentors' work uh, aligns very much so with our first promise, caring adults. So here at America's Promise, when we're thinking about our own participation in National Mentoring Month, we are also thinking broadly about how do we empower other people and other organizations to share uh, stories of impact um, regarding caring adults. So this could be mentoring. This could be, you know, um, as Matt said before, like a lot of people think that mentoring is this huge thing. Sometimes it could even be the fact that you're mentoring your child or maybe you're mentoring uh, a young person in your neighborhood. So we want to make sure that we're giving people that space to share those stories. Um, and frequently you'll see that some people are, are through National Mentoring Month are realizing that they had no idea, but here they are. They are, in fact, a mentor to someone. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the five tips that I'm going to give you all um, today. Uh, so those five tips are going to be, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can help uh, plan, create, curate, and share out content for National Mentoring Month. So we're going to talk a little bit about content creation versus content curation. Uh, we're going to definitely go a little bit into how you can get a content calendar started for your organization. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about smart, simple messaging. Uh, then we're going to delve into how you can engage your network, thinking about an influencer strategy. And then I'm just going to double down on what Matt mentioned earlier about how you can participate in National Mentoring Month events. Uh, additionally, I've listed a few uh, resources on this slide. I uh, just want to highlight those really quickly. Uh, I know uh, many of you said that you plan on using some graphics. I just want to note that uh, your content is more likely, it's, it's very much more likely to get shared when you use a graphic. Uh, research actually says it's 40, uh, 40 times more likely to get shared. Uh, so Canva uh, if you haven't heard about it, it's a free tool. If you go to uh, www.canva.com, it is absolutely free. You can make beautiful graphic creations on the fly. I highly recommend it. Um, there's a pro version that's called Canva for Work. It is free for nonprofits. We use it at America's Promise. 99% of the graphics that we create are created through Canva. Uh, and all we do is make templates and we swap pictures out and we have graphics and little little to like five to ten five to ten minutes max. Uh, so I highly recommend that. And then uh, we recommend using TweetDeck for Twitter. Uh, Hootsuite is okay as well if you're familiar with those platforms. Um, it allows you to do uh, social media monitoring and you can also take a look at lists and conversations for free. Uh, and then I've also listed nonprofits on Facebook. It's a great tool uh, if you want to learn how to get smarter on Facebook. They have a lot of awesome resources you can check out as well. All right, so let's get into content creation versus content curation. So even though National Mentoring Month kicks off in January, your organization should start planning now. Uh, the reason why I say that is because the sooner you start planning out your involvement, the easier it will be when the time comes. And that level of involvement can vary. You know, your organization might decide to pull out all the stocks. So you guys might decide that you want to do videos. You might want to do graphics or GIFs or blogs. Uh, and, and maybe your organization has limited capacity. So you might decide that, oh, you know, we have some content that already talks about mentoring. So maybe you'll want to repurpose that. Or maybe you'll want to share relevant articles that are coming out during the month of January. Uh, and that's OK. So uh, the first step. I would recommend is that you get together with the right people at your organization or on your team to decide what can you do. Uh, on our end, we found that brainstorming is an effective way to determine what you can do within your means. Uh, for us, we usually brainstorm at least one to two months in advance. The reason for that is because, you know, a national mentoring month is happening, but all of our other organizations are doing tons of great work, and a lot of the times we need to be able to kind of figure out what we can do, what's coming down the pipeline. There, sometimes there are many things happening. Um, but for us, National Mentoring, Mentoring Month is a priority. So we try to fit it in and then work other things around it. Um, so we asked ourselves four questions. What is our level of effort? You know, 
what are do how many pieces of content do we want to create? Uh, what types of content do we want to go back and and share again? And which partners do we want to target? Um, then we're looking at you know do we want to create content for National Mentoring Month? So are we thinking about going out uh, go reaching out to our CEO uh, John Gompert and having him write a blog? Are we thinking about going to another influencer and having them write an op-ed, um, or you know having them write like a news item? Uh, and then we also think number three we're thinking like okay. Do we already have content related to National Mentoring Month? Uh, have we had any young people recently written about how a mentor has changed their life, or you know whether they, you know, what a web of support? Um, and and for us, a web of support is you can think of it as many mentors uh, helping a particular young person. Uh, so these are things we're thinking about. And then um, the last thing is how can we curate content from our partners in the news? This. It's, I, would, I would highly recommend this for, for those who don't have as much time to create content. If there are partners or affiliates or um, news outlets that you think are going to be sharing a lot of content around mentoring, it is okay to curate that content and figure out how to fit that within the messaging that makes sense from the toolkit. Uh, so from us this past year, we determined that we would create a how to get involved uh, and National Mentoring Month news item. And what this was, it was just a list of things that people could do in the month of January to get involved in National Mentoring Month, and it did phenomenal. A lot of people shared it. It was a great way for people to go back to the mentor website to see what was going on, to download the toolkit, to get involved. Uh, we found that that was a very easy way to do it. Um, and being realistic, January is a, the beginning of January. Everybody's coming back from the holidays. So we wanted something that really eased people into it. Um, the next thing also as well, we worked with our alliance engagement team a lot. So our alliance engagement team, they are like our national partner gateways. Uh, so we worked with them to make sure that we were reaching out to partners to get their content. And then we were also mindful to look out for articles that were aligned with uh, National Mentoring Month. So the next thing we'll talk about is creating a content calendar. So once you determine the type of content you want, the best way to organize it is in calendar form. It doesn't have to be super fancy. I highly recommend maybe doing it in Excel. If you're more comfortable doing it in Word, you can do that too. Um, I will double down on what Matt said, though. I, you have to use the Mentor Toolkit. Uh, I, I, for me personally, if we had not used Mentor's Toolkit this year, I think we would have been uh, completely off base. For us, it was so helpful for us to go in, to look at the, the, the key dates, to look at the messaging, and that actually helped us to weed out the content that we were curating. Some of it we felt like wasn't really aligned with the different weeks that they had in there for um, this past year. So um, that helped us to make sense of all of the content that we were putting together. So um, this example that you're seeing right here, we just listed out the partners who provided us with content in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we had our uh, fellow at APA at the time. He helped us to put this together. We just listed out the different weeks. In this instance, for 2017, maybe you want to focus on the, the, those key days that they've listed. Uh, you would put that there. You would put the type of content there. Um, and then any additional information that would be useful to staff that are going to be helping to share and disseminate this, these materials. So whether it's like the link or kind of like an explanation of what the blog is about. Uh, and also putting any relevant hashtags in there, that was also important as well because you want to make sure that as you're sharing these uh, great content and resources that people are seeing them. And the only way for people to see them is if you're making sure to share them within the right conversation. So, um, and then I'm just going to talk a little bit about how we uh, had all of our uh, sample tweets and posts and how we organized ourselves based on the calendar of campaign dates. Um, so for us, we just used a Word doc. We put in a lot of the sample tweets and posts. Uh, a great best practice as well is if you've shared mentoring stuff in the past, frequently what we will do is we will go back and actually go ahead and copy a lot of those tweets and just have them in a document. Uh, we found that to be super useful because then we're able to go back. We don't have to rewrite that content again. Uh, sometimes we'll tweak it just to make sure that it fits within uh, what's happening, but otherwise that just saves you a ton of time. So, um, and then also 
you know, something to note is that there are going to be days where you're more likely to see a high level of content circulating. So my recommendation is to really look at the calendar of campaign dates that are in Mentor's Toolkit. Those are definitely going to be the days where you see a huge peak. So as, as a best practice, those days are the days you definitely want to participate. Um, for us, similarly, this past year, the, the times where it was, you know, I'm a mentor, I think you're a mentor, and, you know, anything where there was a huge thing going on, we knew we needed to participate because that's where you're going to see a higher level of engagement from people. That's where you're going to see more people participating, sharing their stories. That's your opportunity to also retweet and engage with other people. It'll help to increase um, your followers online. It'll help expand your network. Um, so those are definitely days that you want to look out for and try to plan some of your content around. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about smart and simple messaging. Um, it doesn't have to be super convoluted. Uh, Mentor has done a great job of having a key messaging document in the toolkit. I highly advise that you use that. Uh, it will save you a ton of time as well. Uh, another thing to also think about, too, is having messaging that appeals to the hearts and minds of caring adults, right? So you, you want to allow them to be able to feel like this isn't something that's so, so difficult to share or that, oh, I could not possibly be a mentor. Like, this is a lot of work. Like, sometimes it's even just as simple as putting something out there that says, you know, you know, young people, they just want you to be there, you know, and sharing a story about, hey, you know, Susie was there for so-and-so uh, who was in the neighborhood and was having a tough time, and, and she noticed that, you know, something was going on, and all she asked was, are you okay? Sometimes those are the stories that stand out to people. Um, and, you know, Mentor also does a great job of providing some graphics to use. So if you feel like you're short for time, you can definitely use some of their graphics as well and maybe even repurpose some of the messaging that's in there. It's just, it's really simple. Um, and a lot of times, too, uh, we just, you know, make sure that, you know, we are aligned with whatever people are saying because that's when you'll see a lot of the great engagement going on. So the next thing I want to talk about really quickly is engaging your network. Um, so I think it's really important for you to figure out who are the people that you want to target, right? So if you have other partners or affiliates or if there are other organizations you've worked with, are there stories that they share that you would also like to share? Um, we, because we, we curated a lot of content from our partners, what we did is once we figured out the ones we wanted to use, we went ahead and um, let, we let them know, hey, we're going to be using your content during National Mentoring Month. Here's when to expect it. And when it went out, they retweeted it, they shared it, they let people know what was going on. And it's a great way to let them know that, you know, hey, you're involved in this conversation. Let's, let's keep it going. And you actually see higher engagement when you do that. Um, another thing, too, is also just letting people know that you're participating in National Mentoring Month. Uh, you know, you'd be very surprised. Sometimes people have no idea, and when you let your network know and you encourage them to participate as well, you see higher levels of engagement because people are looking out for it. All right, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about participating in the actual events. Uh, so you see engagement go up when you have an authentic voice and when your audience sees that you're practicing what you preach. So. Um, at America's Promise, we made sure we were present during the mentoring summit. We had uh, our CEO, John Gompers, and then we had uh, our colleague, um, Craig, from Center for Promise. He actually uh, did a panel with um, some young folks uh, at the mentoring summit, and we made sure to send a few staff members there because we wanted to make sure we captured those moments. We were, we were actually there for the entire day. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where this is, these are opportunities where you can share different things that are going on. Uh, and you're also able to really capture the heart of what's going on as well. So uh, also on the dates they listed that uh, MLK Day was one of the days you can participate. We actually did that this past year, and we saw an extremely high level of engagement. I think people really want to see the fact that you're getting involved and you're doing a lot of things out here. Um, and even if you guys are, yourselves are not able to go, uh, it, even if there's just a representative or if there's someone you can work with that's going to be there, you can still share that. Uh, and it's a great way to show people that this is something that you're really serious about. Um, okay, so then one of the last things that I do want to talk about is that it's okay if things come up. 
So last January, the president, he gave his State of the Union address. Um, we weren't sure if he was going to talk about um, you know, education or graduation rates. He ended up saying this really phenomenal quote that you see right here, each of us is only here because somebody somewhere stood up for us. Uh, we thought it was a fantastic opportunity for us to really just uh, drill home this whole concept of uh, being a, a mentor, being a caring adult, and it did so well. We tagged mentor in it, we, we tagged uh, a ton of people, some other people repurposed it and used it, uh, and this, sometimes you just have to go with the flow, and it's, it's okay if you hear someone say something that's related to National Mentoring Month or being a mentor, feel free to share it because you'll be very surprised a lot of people will resonate with it. So just to recap, um, feel free to create content, but be sure to utilize Mentors Toolkit. And don't be afraid to repurpose existing content from your organization, partners, and affiliates. Um, be sure to make a content calendar that will keep you, your staff, and its external partners organized on what's happening and what needs to go out. Utilize mes uh, messaging from the toolkit, but don't be afraid to, to use messaging that appeals to the hearts and minds of caring adults, like thank you messages. Um, having an influencer strategy is key. So go ahead and make a list of people and or organizations you want to highlight and let them know so you can share too. And then the last thing is be sure to participate in National Mentoring Month events. It gives your organization a much more authentic voice. Uh, a great example would be the Twitter chat that's going to be happening on January 7th. That's a great way to increase your engagement uh, and followers as well. So uh, hopefully all of these items were you know, useful for you and happy to answer any questions at the end. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sarah, for all of these great takeaways. Um, I know our audience is very happy to learn more based on our poll about what social action they can take to build their online presence. So thank you so much. Um, and now we'll give the floor to Amanda Granger to talk about how you can build successful media relationships from the ground up during National Mentoring Month. Um, so Amanda, go, ahead, go right ahead. Hi, everyone. I am going to um, do a little speed uh, through my presentation here, um, but I am the project manager of a television show called American Graduate Day, um, but before I talk about American Graduate Day, I wanted to talk about the initiative that actually started American Graduate Day, which is called American Graduate. Um, and American Graduate is an initiative that's funded by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. So if you are um, a PBS viewer, you've probably seen the, you know, brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting at the end of almost every PBS show that you watch. Um, they're a private corporation that's funded by taxpayers, and they support essentially every PBS and NPR station in the country. And so in 2011, um, based largely in part of the work of America's Promise Alliance, who's been a wonderful partner to us in addition to Mentor, um, they decided that that public media was going to tackle um, the high school graduation rate and really, you know, try to help to rally the troops around getting us to a 90% graduation rate by 2020, which was a goal set um, by America's Promise. And so how they did that is they uh, took a huge amount of funding and dispersed it to um, many, many, many different public media stations. And this work is headed up by the Nine Network in St. Louis. Um, to help public media be a place to convene partners and, you know, elevate the voices of people who are working to keep students on the path to graduation. You can go to the next slide. Uh, and so how CPB and the Nine Network um, and how we really view public media's role in this work is creating a national and local content um, around uh, keeping students on the path to graduation. Uh, public media stations are also producing in-person events. Um, these can be partner meetings and convenings. Sometimes they're public forums or town halls. Sometimes uh, we hold events just to recognize the champions in our communities who are working directly with youth, many of them um, who are mentors. 
uh, we've also, as a system, been creating educational resources for parents and students and teachers um, that they can use to improve the high school graduation rate. And then we do a ton of community outreach. You know, a, a commercial television station generally doesn't have a community outreach department or an education department, but many public television stations, PBS stations, do. Um, and again, this is everything from parent-teacher workshops, uh, the the station in um, Utah actually created an app that students can use to figure out um, what uh, their financial life will need to look like for them to have the, the quality of life that they imagine that they'll have. It's called the Reality Check app. Um, high school equivalency courses, distance learning courses, student reporting, scholarship competitions, internships. So there's tons that PBS stations do directly in the community to support um, this goal of a 90% graduation rate by 2020. Next slide. Um, and again, CPB is, is supporting PBS and NPR stations at a variety of levels. So um, at the top level are stations who we call community hubs. And these are stations who are very invested in this work. Um, they've set is clear strategic goals around this work. And um, they've been given a large um, sum of money and have made a long-term commitment um, to create content and community outreach in support of these goals. Um, and so those are, those are kind of the, the biggest investment. Um, but there are also smaller grants that are spread around the system and other stations who don't necessarily have the capacity to do community hub work over a long period of time, but want to be involved in American Graduate, believe in the mission, and are creating um, shorter content and you know perhaps one-off events, not necessarily a series of events around the country. Um, and then you have content producers who they're not necessarily even stations. They are just creating content that they think, again, is going to elevate uh, these voices. And of course, there are stations who you know, can't participate besides the fact that they broadcast this content. And we appreciate that as well. Anything that anyone can do to um, elevate this conversation, they're all part of American Graduate Beat Initiative. Um, and so on this uh, slide, there should be a map here. Um, this is just to give you the last a reference point for the last round of community hub stations. So later in my presentation, when I talk about how you can engage with PBS stations across the country, I would suggest going back to this map to get a sense of what stations you might want to start with, because these are the community hub stations who have been working over the past several years in their communities, and they're a great starting point. Like I said before, there's so many different ways to engage with American Graduate. Just because you don't see a local community or local station on this list doesn't mean that they would not be interested in working with you, and they probably are interested in working with you because there's so much um, uh, commonality with the mission of public media and, and the mission of mentoring organizations. Slide. Um, so this work, again, has been happening since 2011. Um, we're five years in, and we've seen a fantastic impact. Uh, we've created thousands of hours of content, um, thousands of community events, and worked with thousands of nonprofit organizations around the country and um, uh, in, in support of this goal. And we do have evidence that John Hopkins University actually did a study of American Graduate in 2013 and did find that public media stations who participate in this have been effective conveners in their communities and they have been able to elevate the voices um, of teachers and students um, who are working, again, to increase the graduation rate to 90%. Moving on to American Graduate Day. American Graduate Day is produced by WNET, which is the public television station in New York City. If you watch PBS, uh, you might recognize some of the programs that we produce, Nature, Great Performances, Shakespeare Uncovered. Um, for a long time, we produced Finding Your Roots. So we are a huge national producer for PBS, um, but like every PBS station, we also produce lots of local content. Um, and because of our experience as a national producer, 
we were selected to produce a live broadcast called American Graduate Day, which is one of the cornerstones of the American Graduate Initiative. And it is a call to action campaign. It feels very much like a Jerry Lewis telethon <laughs> or a pledge drive, except we're not asking people for money. We're asking them to engage in this work um, and to volunteer with the organizations that we profile during the day. It's usually uh, late in September or early October. This year it was on September um, 17th. And it features live content, interviews um, with nonprofit staff, um, directors, volunteers, and of course um, the youth that those nonprofits serve. We have lots of live performances. For the past two years, we've been lucky enough to have Soledad O'Brien host the show. And it also features a lot of pre-taped content, like uh, promotional videos from the organizations themselves. We feature many mini documentaries um, that we and other PBS stations produce for the national broadcast. We every year feature 90 second uh, short videos called Stories of Champions. And these are produced by local PBS stations across the country who profile American graduate champions who are working to keep students on the path to graduation. And, and also celebrity testimonials. Um, now this year, we made the decision to have a single call to action, which was be a mentor. So Mentor was a lead partner to us. And because of this focus on mentorship, we have tons of great content, especially, I think, in the stories of champions and the celebrity testimonials that are focused on mentorship and encourage viewers to be a mentor. So as you're considering um, content to share, during National Mentoring Month, please reach out to us and um, perhaps even after this we'll assemble a list of videos that you might want to link to, um, especially those celebrity testimonials that will encourage uh, your constituents to become mentors. Um, so over the course of American Graduate Day, our, our call to action has evolved. Um, at first, you know, we, we asked viewers to volunteer with partners, and unfortunately, we didn't have a mechanism to really follow through with that in the way that we should have. And so we pivoted in 2014 into asking viewers to become an American graduate champion, but that, of course, was very vague. Um, a lot of people gave us feedback that they didn't really understand what it means to be an American graduate champion. So we switched gears again, and we created um, seven simple steps. So these are supposed to be easy things that any American could do to really help um, with the high school dropout crisis. And again, we got the feedback, this is great. It's too much. It's too confusing. Do I have to do all seven? Well, it was a lot. Um, and so now we've, we've really transitioned into this single call to action be a mentor, and we were fortunate enough to be able to integrate the Mentoring Connector API into the American Graduate website. So anyone who visits americangraduate.org slash be a mentor can actually access the Mentoring Connector. And this is very exciting for us because for the first time ever, we have a single um, specific call to action that we know is going to make a big impact, and we also have a way to measure that impact. And that is I think one of the biggest successes of our broadcast this year is working with Mentor to get the database on our site. Next slide. Um, I, I'm going to skip through this, but I do encourage you to go back. All that I will say about American Graduate Day 2016 is that it, in many, many, many ways, it was our most successful broadcast ever. We saw significant increases across a variety of key metrics. And we credit a lot of that to that single call to action around mentorship and the fact that so many viewers were really able to connect on a personal level with those mentoring stories. We saw our average viewing time increase by 37%. And so we really think that mentorship, not only is it a great thing to promote because it's the right thing to do, but we're also seeing that it is very compelling um, as content. And so we're, we're really excited about continuing this work with the mentoring movement and telling even more mentoring stories. Next slide. Um, so all of the organizations, again, that we worked with this year were either um, formal mentoring organizations or 
they, um, they were organizations that work with youth that had a mentoring component. And we provided them with a variety of resources to help them promote uh, the American Graduate Day uh, broadcast. Again, the broadcast has passed, um, but we'd be happy to share any of those resources with you. Again, especially the celebrity testimonials and stories of champions video segments, any content that we have that might be useful, um, we'll, we are going to figure out a way to make that available um, to, to mentor um, members. So now I do um, want to talk about how your organization can engage with public media. Uh, the first thing that I want to cover is understanding the public media system. I've been working uh, at a PBS station and that public media organization for the past five years, and I still don't fully understand it. It's very confusing, so you're not alone. Um, we feel the same way. Uh, the first thing that you should know is that PBS um, is actually a distributor of content, and it doesn't actually create any content, and that all um, PBS stations are actually independent. So WNET is independent from the Nine Network in St. Louis, from PBS SoCal, from Twin Cities PBS. So even though we're all PBS members, we actually are our own independent stations making our own um, decisions. So I would advise you the best thing to do is to engage with an individual station in a community that you want to have an impact with um, rather than trying to connect with PBS overall. Um, and stations, all stations produce content. Um, only a very few stations produce national content, but other stations are producing local content and are engaging in their local communities. And again, most stations do have education and outreach departments, so it, it's a really, really amazing system that, um, that is wonderful to engage with. Um, most stations are TV. They're either PBS stations or they're radio stations or NPR stations, but there are some stations that are both, and if you do have uh, one of those stations, we call them dual licensees in your community, that can be a great way to get your content and your message on several different platforms. Um, and, and the last thing that I do want to say about this is because PBS stations are all independent, as you can imagine, just like mentoring organizations, some of them have a lot of resources, a lot of capacity. Um, some of them have, you know, don't have the same level of resources or capacity. And again, because every station is independent, they have different priorities and different um, programming strands that they focus on. That being said, again, we do suggest that you engage with your local stations. Um, and actually, if you go, can we go back a slide? Sorry. Back um, to the first engaging in public media slide. Um, before that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, actually, we can go. Sorry. Can we go back one slide? So Amanda, in the interest of time, we might, I'm going to move ahead a little bit. Um, okay. And, oh, oh, maybe they're in there. Right. Hold on one second. I'll get us to the right place. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened there. All right. Um, so when you do go back and, and check out these slides, there are specific suggestions of things that you should be asking your local station for um, and how to engage in station-specific uh, work, so who you should be reaching out to, and also how to engage in program-specific work. You'll probably see um, 
programs on your local station or even nationally that you think might be relevant to your work. And um, it has guidelines on how to engage in both ways. Um, and then the last thing that I uh, will talk about is partner best practices. So as you start to work with your local PBS station, one great thing that you can do is promote the relevant PBS content to your constituents. You know, cross promotion is, is really important. Um, another thing that stations often need is space. Uh, for screenings, community events, parent workshops. This works both ways. Uh, some stations actually have a considerable amount of space, so you should reach out to them about that as well. Um, again, offering executives, celebrity spokespeople for broadcast and events. Um, offer to connect your PBS station to other relevant partners, depending on, on your mutual goals. And offering to consult on relevant projects. You know, we do a lot of work with community advisory boards. And um, when you are consulting with us, don't be afraid to push back. You're the experts in this field. So if you feel like there's something kind of off with the storytelling, or there's really important messaging, or there is language that needs to be used um, that's specific to, to the, the communities that you work with, you know, tell, tell people that you're working with. And if they're not responsive, then um, then that might not be the best group to work with to tell your story. Um, but I think you'll probably find that in the public television system, people are very responsive to that feedback. They do want to do the right thing. They do want to tell stories in, um, in respectful uh, ways. So PBS can be a really great partner to you. Um, and then going beyond American Graduate, next slide. Uh, WNET is currently thinking about how we can support mentoring year-round. And so we have some questions here that we have for mentoring organizations. Um, you know, what are the biggest challenges for you in closing the mentoring gap? What mentoring movement needs could public media and especially public television meet? Where is there innovation or potential for innovation in the mentoring movement? And also, you know, what are some low or no-cost ways that we could support the mentoring movement immediately? Um, without having to raise a significant amount of money around it. So if you have thoughts about these, I really encourage you to reach out for me. My email is here on the end. Next slide. Oh, all right. Um, so I'm Granger A at WNET.org. Um, they will send that information out to you. And thank you so much. Um, sorry for running over time. No problem at all. Thank you so much, Amanda. And this is an area I know many of our mentoring partnerships and, and youth supporting um, organizations want to grow. So really great information. Um, we have about five minutes left, so probably have time for one question, Audrey. Um, do want to say that if you have additional questions, as Amanda and some of our presenters mentioned, their email and Twitter handles are included in those introductory slides. Um, so we'll make sure that those are available and certainly use the hashtag mentoring webinar if you want to connect with us uh, post today's conversation. So Audrey, one question. Pick a really great mm -hmm. one for our group. I'm going to try to pick one that culminates a lot. Um, <laughs> we haven't done anything for National Mentoring Month in the past and we're a pretty small program and just started. Where should we start? And this can go to anybody. Sure. This is Matt. I'm, I'm happy to take that. Um, I guess I would answer in two ways. Uh, one would be if you do have a social media presence, then that is definitely a really low-hanging fruit way to go. Uh, with the way that the toolkit has been designed, that will literally take you five minutes of going to the toolkit, finding a post that you like, copying it, and then um, sending it out from, from your accounts. Um, so that another way to go if you don't yet have a social media presence would be to try to start one over the next month to be ready for January. Um, and even if you're just reposting what other organizations are using, that's a great way to start to gain followers and to just amplify messaging. If social media is not something that your organization uses, I would say a way to start would be to reach out to other local organizations and to make sure that you are listed and included in the mentoring connector. So uh, directly from the toolkit, if you're not yet a program that, that it would include you, uh, you can go and, and follow the instructions to get engaged. So that is a, 
a couple key easy ways to start. Um, and if there are other programs in your area, the idea of doing mentoring fairs or other events can, can be really powerful. Yeah, so certainly, as Matt mentioned, uh, let the toolkit guide you. And, and hopefully, there's lots of great examples included that apply to any level of program. And that's really, I think, the first place to start. And the great thing is that you can build on your engagement from year to year. So maybe you can't do everything you would have liked, but next year, you have a really great plan of action knowing what's ahead. So great question, Audrey. Um, at this point, we're going to have to go through our final slides here. So thank you so much, uh, first, to all of our panelists, Matt Meyerson, Sarah Boyson, Amanda Granger, and of course to you, Audrey, for your help with the Q&A, and Jennifer Burgoyne for making sure our, our webinar ran smoothly today. Um, your participation, all of, all of you who joined us today and continued partnership um, in making sure that the mentoring movement continues to Thrive is greatly appreciated, and we look forward to all of your activations in January. So uh, just in terms of some additional resources, we encourage you to get no-cost technical assistance for your mentoring program by visiting the National Mentoring Resource Center. And there's a link there as well, as Matt mentioned. Um, the Mentoring Connector is a great way to get inquiries for your program, so please make sure your program is listed there. You can access uh, the webinar materials one week after the webinar. You'll all receive an email with the recording information, slides, and additional resources. And don't forget, uh, we want your feedback, so please answer the short survey and help us make this series even better from month to month. Um, be sure to visit the Collaborative Mentoring Webinar Series page on Mentor's website for an archive of all past webinars and information about what's ahead. You can also continue the conversation with Mentor and our panelists using hashtag MentoringWebinar. So thank you again to everyone for joining us today. Please uh, register for next month's webinar, which will be held December 15th, 2016. The topic will be Mentoring Immigrant Youth. Thank you all again, and enjoy the rest of your week.